We're then prompted for some estimated disk sizes. Normally you'd accept the default. Um, the number of records, this is optional as I said, uh, and it's an estimation of the number of rows the table will contain. The closer the estimate to the actual number of rows, the more efficient the table structure will be as the table auto sizes and optimizes. Uh, this efficiency is soon irrelevant as most developers leave this set to the default values. Average size defaults to 400 and this is an estimate of the average number of characters that each record will contain. And the frame size defaults to 2048 and this specifies the initial size of each frame in bytes. Sizes can range from 256 bytes to 4 gigabytes with the new universal driver and the system will automatically reduce any value specified as greater than this. Size threshold. By default, whenever data occupies 80% of the primary space currently allocated for a table, so the space dedicated to primary frames, the table is automatically resized by the system. However, there is a trade-off when changing from the default. Um, a higher value puts more data into the same space whereas a lower value speeds access to some degree. We then have the create option, so create data portion now. You would normally have this checked as it creates the data table ready for data entry as well as the table dictionary for you automatically. And you'd also normally leave the add to current database definition checked. Uh, Open Insight does what is known as a quick attach on the way in, that is to say that it already knows what files are meant to be attached and it preloads this information into memory. This quick attach image is stored in a system file called the DBT. So for example, your copy of Open Insight will have arrived with a sysprog.dbt and as you create new applications, they'll be stored um, in there. If you do not select this prompt and add a table now, the file will still exist in the system, but it will not automatically be attached at login. So we normally have that checked. I'm gonna count started here because I just wanna work with the one table for now. We need to put some more data in here. So I'm gonna have another column called four names. And again, we'll just select the defaults in here. We need to have a title. And again, we'll just accept the defaults for now. And we want to have a date of birth, just call it DAB. And again, we'll just select the, uh, the defaults as we go through. With regard to the date of birth, we actually want to go in and change some of the attributes. So double click to open up the attributes window. And what we want to do in here is to change the data type to date and the default also to date, as that makes more sense to us. And because I'm working in Europe, the data validation, I don't want the American format. So I'm going to go in and select DE. OK. And we'll just simply remove the American date in there. And the output, because I want it to show in the European format, again, we'll change that to D2 slash E, which gives us our European date when that is displayed. Now the description of the column usage, we'll put in here as patient's date of birth. We're happy with key and the position, we can leave that alone, and we'll display that um, right justified. The length is okay, and the column heading for our reports Let's change that to date of birth so it's a little bit better than just DOB. And once we're done, we can click OK to save those changes and you'll see that our table builder has now reflected the, the data type that we changed. And then we'll go and carry on. So we'll add in an address here. And again, we'll select the defaults, except we will change the single value or multi-value to multi-value. Remember, we want to have multiple lines of our address and we'll add in town. And in there, we can just select the defaults. Now, if you don't want to change anything, you actually down arrow rather than tabbing through, and that would just drop down to the next line. And we'll have a postcode. Selecting all of the defaults again, and gender. Now, we'll only want to allow three values here, so um, we'll come back to that a little bit later. And we'll also have comments. And again, we'll select all of the defaults there. So if you're following through, just go through, add in those dictionary items uh, so that you can follow through the rest of the tutorial. Now you might have noticed that I've kept address, town, and postcode separately. 
Um, now, although we can search on the whole of the multi-value column and have it display nicely without any worries, uh, we still want to split items like address. Uh, we keep the town and the postcode in separate columns for sorting purposes, you know, for mail sorting. As we do not know the number of lines in our address, we will want to know which line holds the town or the postcode, and keeping them in their own columns eases this. Another example would be contact numbers such as telephone, fax and mobile numbers. Right, let's just go back into the attributes for gender and what we want to do is to go into the input so we'll double click for our options and we want to select row number nine this x y z uh, so match a specific string and click ok now it drops x y z in there and some quote marks and we can simply over type that with m for male come down f for female and of course we might not know so we'll put u for unknown now what that does is that gives us three literals, which is M, F and U. Once we're done, we OK that. And you can see here now that uh, we're resting on gender and we can see the, um, the, the, the information, the summary information, so it's left justified. But the nice thing here, we can see our input conversions, so M, F and U, rather than having to keep double clicking and going here to check what we've got. So this is one of the reasons why we do turn on the show column details. Next, we need to create some symbolic dictionary items, so calculated columns. So let's begin with an easy formula that will calculate an approximate age. So if we click on the edit table, we get the yellow window come up, and we need to type in the name of the symbolic into the calculated column section. So this is going to be um, approx underscore age. We just tab across the data value we're okay with. And once we get to the formula, we need to double click it to open up the edit calculated column attributes window. We get our summary information about our column here, but the area that we're interested in is the edit formula. There is also a formula wizard button that you can click, which will create an xlate. So the xlate wizard, next. So we can select our table and we can work through. Now I don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to enter in this by hand. And the formula that we need is at ands equals at record less than four or greater than four. And then the approx age equals int bracket bracket date open and close bracket minus at record greater than sorry less than four greater than four close bracket divided by three six five point two five and close the brackets and the last line that we want that we want is at ands equals approx age now note in here the bracket four refers to the row number four for the date of birth column in my example uh, change the value accordingly if your date of birth column is in a different row. Once completed, we can click the test button, so test the symbolic, and you should be rewarded with a successful notice as I have here. So click OK to the dialog box, and then we'll click OK to save those changes. And this will take us back to the main table builder window, showing the column name, the data type, and as much of the formula as it can fit into the box here. Right, so that's our table created, our dictionary created. So the last thing that we need to do is to save that. And then that closes off the window. And finally, we can close down the table builder to return to the main repository view window. That's the end of this lesson. You just created your first data table or dictionary. And that's the table that we will be using in the next lesson, which will be looking at creating application forms using the forms designer. Thanks very much for your time today and I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye.